Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Katie and I will be running today's webinar, CK12's Flexbook 2.0 platform. We're so glad you've joined us today. Yes, welcome, everyone. Many of you joining us today are participating in the CK12 Certified Educator Program, so welcome back. If you are brand new to the Certified Educator Program and would like to learn more or officially register with us, you can visit ck12.org slash certified and press register to get started. We have recently revamped the CEP to have new streamlined requirements for 2020. So to become certified, you'll watch two mandatory on-demand sessions. You'll then join us for our three core live sessions, which you can attend at your convenience. This session counts as one of those three live requirements. Next, you'll complete the accompanying assignments for all sessions. Lastly, you'll complete a final form to request your certification, and then you'll be CK12 certified. Now, those are the requirements for anybody who wants to go through with this free CK12 certified educator program. But if you're just here today to learn and get the information on the Flexbook 2.0 platform, that's totally fine too. At the end of today's webinar, we can discuss more about the Certified Educator Program for any participants with questions, or you can type any questions in the Q&A window for Star or Katie to answer privately. Now, before we get started, I do wanna make sure everyone is comfortable with the Zoom webinar platform. I know people have been downloading Zoom left and right in the last week or so, um, and you may not be totally comfortable with all the pieces. So you should see two different options on your Zoom screen. One is for Q&A and one is for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question for us here at the CK12 team, please post it in the Q&A window. This will help us track which questions we've answered and make sure we get to all of them before we close up today. The chat window, on the other hand, is a place for a community conversation that is already up and running with great conversations started. Um, we'd love for you all to introduce yourselves, to tell us where you live, what subject you teach, how things are going. Just make sure that if you want it to go to everyone, you put all panelists and attendees and not just CK12 or the panelists, or only we will get to see your wonderful information. Also, we are recording today's webinar and we'll have it posted to our YouTube channel and our webinars page within 24 hours. So if you learn best by just sitting back and relaxing and watching, um, great. Know that you can always go through the recording again if you need to. Um, if you want to have a couple screens open and be active while you're following along, that's awesome too. But let's talk about what we're going to learn today. Today's session is going to cover all the following. Navigating CK12 to find flexbooks and related content. From signing in to searching for books and resources, we're going to make sure you're comfortable exploring CK12. CK12's Flexbook 2.0 platform. This robust platform unifies CK12 resources and delivers lessons in an interactive and engaging format. We're going to talk about our adaptive practice system. Our intelligent system adapts to students by challenging them with harder questions or recommending resources. And lastly, we'll talk about assignments and reports. Assign a Flexbook 2.0 lesson or related modalities and see student or class level reports. So I do wanna mention that we have two resource pages you might find handy for this session. The first will help you get started with Flexbooks and the 2.0 platform. You can access it via the tiny URL, tinyurl.com slash CK12 Flexbooks 2019. And the second resource is on getting started with CK12 Adaptive Practice and Assignments. You can view that one, download it, and save it from tinyurl.com slash CK12 Practice 2019. We'll put those links in the chat window so you have access to those as well. Um, but these are great, quick resources as reference sheets for this particular session. Awesome. So to kick us off, I'm going to go straight into a live demo. So let me steal the screen from Katie. And you should be seeing my screen now. And um, this is what I land on when I go to ck12.org. Um, I'm already signed into a demo account as a teacher, but you'll notice that there's two options for our site here that our students will see a slightly different landing page than our teacher version. So one thing that hopefully you already know about CK12 is that absolutely everything we offer on CK12 is free. 
We do not charge for anything. You will never hit a paywall. You will never see any advertising. We offer all of our resources for free for everyone. But since we're an intelligent system, actually I should have done a dramatic but, I mean, we're free. Free is free is free is free. We would like for you to sign in or sign up for CK12. So if you have not already, you're going to either um, sign in or sign up. Um, we've got multiple different ways to do that. And that way our system can track your progress, can make recommendations, can get your dashboard going, can save things to your library. So just make sure to do that if you haven't already. Um, there's lots of different ways to get to resources on CK12. Currently, we have this page that we're directing a lot of people to. If you are in a situation where you're looking for some quick content to teach your kids at home or to add to your students, our experts at CK12 have curated a list of the top concepts for the month of March. And we have quick assign buttons or even just links just to share. So if you haven't clicked on this top concept page and search for your subject yet, um, might be something that I would recommend that you do. Anytime I want to get back to the home page, I press the CK12 icon and I'm taken back to the home page. So usually you're going to see this as your landing page for a teacher. And you'll notice if I scroll down, it gives me some cool stats. And then I ask, what do you want to teach today? You can dive right into math by level, math by subject, science, and then you'll notice we also have some English content, some social studies, um, even some other areas like astronomy, engineering, health. We've got a few college books. We have country specific pages and we have translations that are in the works from partners. So that's one way to dive right into content. If I keep scrolling down, I could also click on any of these pages if I was looking for something specific and wanted to browse. So if you knew that you were looking for a simulation, you could click right here and it would take you to our simulations page. If you knew you wanted a click, so it'll take you to your browse page. All of these things that I just showed you right here can be accessed from the explore menu up at the top. And actually this is probably my favorite way, honestly, to just kind of jump around to different things on CK12, is to come to this explore menu and I can find a book if I'm looking for a flex book to start using with my students. If I knew I wanted a simulation, if you're looking for more information on our certified educator program, I think this explore toggle gets us to a lot of resources really quickly, which is great. Um, also, we're all used to using just a search bar. You can come up here and you can search for um, any topic that interests you. Um, I'm going to search for a science topic and you'll see that I have the option to search all of CK12 or search just in a specific area. And when I search all of CK12, I have options for filtering. I usually don't pay too much attention to the grade over here, but I do come down and I look at the different categories. And we're gonna talk throughout this session about all of the different resources we offer at CK12. We have a lot of different learning modalities, ways to engage students. And so if you knew you were looking for a video, you could press it. If you knew that you were looking for a Flexbook textbook, a 2.0 that um, has this concept in it, you would select it there. And one other thing that I want to show you really quickly is that we have different tabs when you're searching for content and CK12 content is going to pull up all of CK12's written, curated, vetted content. Uh, most of our offerings are going to be in that middle to high school math and science areas. But if you're looking for something that we don't have, like let's just say I'm looking for literature, you can come over to this community contributed tab and you can see resources that have been um, published from our community. So you might find some books here that you like, some individual lessons, some reads. You can see that created by is somebody not CK12. So you just might find some other resources if you wanted to search for, for terms and look at the community contributed tab. 
Okay, I think that was all I wanted to show just at the beginning with just some quick kind of navigations using the search. Um, I'm going to select a book here in a minute for the next demonstration, but Katie, what kinds of questions are coming in? So we're getting a couple of different ones. The first one I want to address is there is a question on pricing. All of this is free. Everything Lindsay showed you already, everything she's going to show you today, everything we show you in any of our webinars is 100% free to use. There's no premium version or anything like that. Um, so feel free to just sign up and start using it today. Um, there have been a bunch of questions coming in related to Google Classroom and Canvas and Schoology and kind of using CK12 in another environment. Um, when Lindsay talks about assignments later on, she'll show you how to assign um, to CK12 and Google Classroom directly from CK12. Um, Schoology and Canvas are a little bit different, but our webinars page has a great resource on that and a specific video uh, recorded from a training we did all about using Schoology and using Canvas and using Google Classroom. Um, so definitely check those out, but we will stay on and kind of go into those nitty gritty parts if you need us to do that, that at the end. Um, but it is available both within CK12 classes and across there. Um, and then the next piece that they are asking about is the difference between Flexbooks and Flexbooks 2.0. Um, and the short version is Flexbooks is a larger umbrella and Flexbooks 2.0 are kind of our newer offerings. But since that's the topic of what Lindsay is going into next, um, maybe we'll kind of just jump into what that new 2.0 platform looks like. And as she talks, she can kind of differentiate a bit as she goes. Sure thing, Katie. Um, right, CK12, we were founded back in 2007. So we've been around for almost 13 years now. And we started with our original Flexbooks. And then over the years, we've unified all of our resources into a more robust platform that's Flexbook 2.0. So I think, Katie, you're going to take the screen back from me and yep. let's look at some of our slides talking about 2.0. Okay, so we use the word um, platform now because we offer, what we offer is so much more than a textbook. Our platform uses the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to enable a student's personalized journey. Each lesson can be a powerful mix of content, including interactives, adaptive practice, videos, and so much more. Some lessons even offer inline questions to check for understanding during the lesson and also give the students feedback on their answers as they are learning. So this personalized learning system adapts to the needs and skills of each student. So like Lindsay just said, a flexbook is not your ordinary textbook. These books are tightly integrated with clear, focused, and engaging interactives. You can find user-contributed books on almost any subject imaginable on our site. Um, but she's going to start by highlighting a few features of our core offerings for middle school and high school math and science. For our math teachers, we have books specifically designed for the Common Core that incorporate the latest in educational technology. These books include multimodal integrated resources to support the experiential Socratic spirit of the Common Core. The instructive text and images offer formative assessment with immediate feedback. We help answer the age old student question, when will I ever use this? By grounding our questions and interactives in the real world. Now, CK-12's interactive science flexbooks are brimming with real world applications. Students explore bigger thinking questions like, why do trips to Mars happen only during certain launch windows? How efficient is a wind turbine? Or why do diamonds sparkle? All of our flexbooks could include embedded videos that you have either created or curated. You have the ability to add inline questions in your books for students to get immediate feedback. And both our simulations and our plics can be embedded right in any lesson. Lessons in the Flexbook 2.0 platform can have either attached adaptive practice or customized quiz. And we're going to talk more about adaptive practice in a few minutes. But one thing you can't do with a print textbook is instantly change the text to a different language. At the bottom of our site, you will see a Google Translate box that allows you to change the text and menu options for a lesson to dozens of languages. I know this is really important for a lot of you, so check out that Google Translate. The toolbar for our Flexbook 2.0 platform 
has a section for notes and highlighting. When moving from printed text to digital text, students still need the ability to highlight and to annotate, and they can do this with CK12. Any notes and highlights stay in the individual student's account so that they can refer to them at any time. And perhaps the most exciting thing about a Flexbook is your ability to customize and localize content for your region and your students. Customizing a book can be as easy as spending a few minutes changing a title and rearranging the scope and sequence, or it can be as involved as working with other teachers to systematically update a book to reflect your standards and represent your community. Again, this is the subject of the next webinar in the sequence, which is called Customizing CK-12 Flexbooks and Adaptive Practice. So we're not gonna go too far into the customizations today. But do know that you have the ability to use any of our content as is, or you can click Customize to adapt content. You can even combine content from different books or create your own book from scratch. Okay, I'm gonna go back to a live demo. So keep your questions coming into the Q&A window. And I wanna show you our Flexbook 2.0 platform. Um, I'm going to use the Explore menu to get there. And I'm gonna go over to Flexbooks 2.0. When I do that, I'm taken to this landing page that talks a little bit about what's exciting about 2.0, what's new about 2.0. And as I scroll down, I'm gonna see a list of math books and of our science books that we have that are interactive. We also have some social studies content listed down here. So let's open up one of these books. Let's, let's pick the interactive middle school math six book. So when you are looking at a flex book, you're gonna get a description of the book. You can see that this is by CK12. We do have a teacher edition for our math books. And there are lots of different things that you can do here on the main page. You can add this to your library. If you're signed in, you can start building a library of resources. You can customize this book if you want to make changes to it. You can share, you can add it to another flex book. But for right now, let's just do a little bit of a tour of what's in this book. So let's go down to uh, expressions. Um, we'll pick on unknown values here. You can see that we have these different chapters and sections underneath each chapter. And when I select um, a section, so this is on unknown values, I'm taken to what we call the start page. And here on the start page, before I even get into the lesson, I'm presented other ways to learn. And there are symbols here that tell you what these are. This is another um, lesson, another read that's related to unknown values. This is a video. And then down here, this is one of our interactive clicks. So there are other ways to learn, which you could use as um, ideas to supplement the lesson if you want extension activities for students. But I'm gonna press start and go to the main lesson and our new Flexbook 2.0 platform. So you're gonna notice some really cool things about this book. As I scroll down, you'll see that there's not very much text until I get to something that I'm gonna do, an interactive. And when I try the interactive here, it's gonna, there we go, say so there's probably a little bit of a lag with Zoom. Um, I am doing a very simple interactive that's gonna help me answer the questions for this problem. Um, I've got several questions right here immediately related to what was above. If I miss the question, I get a hint about why um, I missed it, and I can retry or try again. This is just immediate input for the students, immediate feedback as they're learning and continuing on with their lesson. Uh, we've got images, we've got videos, this is another interactive with more questions here. Again, this is what we call inline questions for students to answer. Some more photos, some more lessons. This is a highly, highly interactive book. Um, so that's pretty exciting. This is, this is what you're gonna get with our new middle school um, and high school math books. Let me go back out to the homepage now and let's dive into a science book.
I used the explore menu last time. Let's come down here. And I'm going to look at physics content. When I select physics, I'm again taken right to that physics book and that 2.0 platform. And I can look at um, different lessons in here. Let's look at average velocity. So once again, I've got all these other ways to learn on the start pages. This one has simulations, which are those icons there. Also has study guides. When I press start, again, I'm taken to the lesson. Uh, maybe some things that I didn't show you in the math book is the ability to instantly change the language. If I need this content in Spanish, I'm going to change it to Spanish. And you can see that even the menus were changed to Spanish. The content, uh, it's getting pretty good is what everybody says with Google Translate, that um, it's, it's a great option if you're needing you know, another, another language quickly. It's not perfect since it's done by machine, but it's, it's getting pretty good. Um, over here on our toolbar, we have some basic tools. Um, one that I think is, is, is really neat for students is the ability to highlight and take notes. Let's see. Let's say that that's something important that I want to highlight. I've been in classes where they've color coded the different things like highlight the topic sentence, highlight um, the hypothesis, and I could also add notes to different sections here. So I could type a note. And my highlights and notes would be saved to my account over here on the right. Um, up at the top, you'll notice that there's this assign button that's ever present. And we're going to talk about assignments in the last section. But just keep in mind that you can press this button and you have immediate option to assign to CK12 or to Google Classroom. OK, why don't I pause there again, Katie, and see how we're doing. You're probably getting a lot of learning management system questions in and things like that that are going to be upcoming. But how are you doing with just navigating and finding books? Yeah, we have a couple different questions that have come in. Um, one having to do probably with that translate piece and assigning it. Um, there were, they were asking about posting a book twice, once in Spanish, once in English with the assignments. Um, I think the short version is that you would share the book in the primary language. So in English, if it's written in English, we do have some books written in Portuguese on a Brazil page, for example. Um, those would get shared kind of in the language that it's written in, and then students could use the translate option from there. Um, they're not, it's not that you would be posting it in a different language. You would just share the book and they would translate it. Um, our practice assignments don't translate the same way because some of them have open questions. And so the like Google auto translate doesn't work with open response questions. Um, so they would have to be specifically questions written in that language, um, which you'll see some here and there as we kind of expand partnerships. Um, but hopefully that answers your question about languages. We do have a question about someone that says they're using assignments for bio and chem and they're confused with the fact that reading for the assignment seems to be different than the Flexbook. Um, so I'm guessing that's coming from the fact that they either found an individual text page through our search, um, kind of as you're talking about navigating, or they picked one of our books from here, or they used our Flexbook browse and ended up on an older book. Um, so we do have a couple different assignment uh, or ways to kind of access assignments, um, ways to access content on particular topics. We do have older Flexbooks as well as our new 2.0 Flexbooks. Um, and so Lindsay's kind of navigating through finding stuff. Um, so we recommend that if you are using a Flexbook, you make your assignments directly from within that Flexbook so that the assignments students see will match the Flexbook you're using directly and you're not assigning different one-off lessons within our text. Um, so hopefully that answers that particular piece. Um, we are going to talk about insights a little bit later on. There's a question about how do I know if students did all these really cool things, specifically the interactives within a lesson. Um, right now you can see the time they spent on that, but not um, how they did on anything embedded directly within a lesson. Um, and we are looking to expanding those insights down the road. So we'll see how that works in the long run. But right now um, it's just kind of seeing what, where they spent their time and then most of the reports you're getting are based on practice and those particular pieces. Um, so let's see, we've got a whole bunch that came in right when we started answering questions. <laughs> of course, Do you of want course. to, I don't know if you can see any of them or you want to take one, um, but. Uh, 
the difference between adaptive practice, adaptive learning and quizzes, we're about to do that. Katie, actually, why don't we launch, why don't we launch a poll real quick? I always love to do a poll in a session like this. Um, that's going to ask you, you know, how comfortable are you at this point with finding a flexbook and related resources on CK12? And we're just asking you to pick one that you're super comfortable, very comfortable, comfortable or not comfortable. And our team will review those answers just, just to see how we're doing. Um, I'm hoping that you're, you're kind of getting the hang of it. We are a very robust site and you can go down all kinds of, um, rabbit holes, looking at different, um, different content, but I'm, I'm hoping that you all are, are feeling more comfortable with this resource, with these finding resources. So we'll leave that poll up for just another minute. And then Katie, maybe we'll just continue on with the adaptive practice demonstration and see if that sparks some more questions and probably it'll answer a few questions as well. Yeah, we'll, let, we'll kind of wrap up this poll, maybe share some results there. So we can see, it looks like you guys are starting to get comfortable. Some of you are brand new. It looks like some people joined late, so you're probably totally lost. Um, but we're hopefully gonna continue to share. And then as we said, we will post this webinar. We will do different pieces. Um, I do wanna just answer one quick last question before we move on. And we will continue to go through these questions. So don't worry. Our team will continue to answer them via text and we'll stop periodically. Um, but the question was, can we see what students see? And so with the exception of a few kind of word phrasing changes, maybe a standards option here, you're basically seeing what students see. So all of those lessons that Lindsay was showing, um, the 2.0 text, any of the practice questions as we go into this, anytime you're previewing that piece or assigning that piece, you're seeing exactly what the students are seeing. Yours may say view practice where theirs says start practice, but once you get into it, you're seeing the same thing. Um, so we don't have two separate sites because we try to make it as clear as possible. Um, logistically, like your assignment workflow is a little bit different, but the actual assignment and the actual lesson and all those pieces match one-to-one. -one. Um, so hopefully that answers that piece. So I think with that, we're going to jump back in. Um, I am going to share my screen, borrow this back from Lindsay, um, not steal it, just borrow it. Um, <laughs> and we will go from there. And let's see if we can share this particular piece. So here we go. Awesome. Okay. So I think with that, we're moving into practice. Here we go. Adaptive practice. Um, and this is exciting. Uh, we're, we're really proud of our adaptive practice system at CK12. We have over 150,000 questions covering math, science, and even spelling. We offer questions at three levels, and they adapt to student performance. We offer content when students struggle. And then our adaptive practice is also customizable into quizzes. And we're not really gonna talk about that today because this is more of the like getting you started, getting you comfortable with our, with our books and our adaptive practice, but we're gonna cover that in next week's webinar, customizing CK12 and adaptive practice. Um, I'm gonna show you several ways to access adaptive practice, depending on if you're assigning a Flexbook 2.0 lesson or if you're just wanting the standalone modality at ck12.org slash practice. But let's, let's just go over the basics. So here's how it works. Our system is set up to challenge students to get 10 questions correct. Students will see this at the top of their practice. Get in the game, get 10 answers to complete your practice goal. Our system meets students where they are with three levels of questions, easy, medium, and hard. The system will match the student's level and will gradually increase or decrease difficulty depending on how students are performing. This means a student who is struggling may hit a goal of 10 correct with all easy questions, and a student who is more advanced would have more of a mix of levels. For teachers, this ensures that each student is progressively and appropriately challenged while maintaining a clear record of each student's level of understanding. Having questions that adapt to students' needs is awesome, but CK12 takes it to the next level by making content recommendations in the moment. If a student is struggling, CK12 will intervene by recommending helpful resources like reads and videos. This is really the magic of the system. Um, as you're juggling lots of students these days, it's difficult for you to differentiate for all students in the moment, but our system does the heavy lifting for you and ensures that students are being appropriately challenged and supported. 
Okay, let's take a look at a sample practice screen for adding and subtracting money. Um, I always laugh because this that seems like a very expensive hot dog to me, but um, I don't know what part of the world this practice question is where it's 865 French fries 528, but uh, here we go. So at the top, you'll notice that we have a progress bar and it displays the number of questions answered correctly. You can see that our system has already set the goal of getting 10 correct, and this is a system requirement. It cannot be changed by the teacher or student. All right, the second one, you can see the skill level meter that will increase or decrease based on the student's correct and incorrect answers. We have all different types of questions that appear in practice, including multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, and select all that apply. Images are also included in some questions when applicable. And then hints are also available at the bottom left during practice for most of our concepts. Sometimes the hint appears as text and sometimes it even appears as a short video. And then a scratch pad is available for all questions if students need to use their mouse or stylus or fingers and write on the screen to solve a problem. Improve this question gives users a chance to report an issue they may see with a question or an answer to the CK12 staff. All right, so when a student presses stop now on an adaptive practice, they will see this report. If you are a teacher who has assigned this practice to your student, you will have access to the same report when an assignment is turned in. You can see if the student met the goal of getting 10 correct, which would be 100%. Here you see that only seven questions were completed and submitted. Other information includes the best streak and time spent. An extremely helpful indicator of a student's understanding of a concept is the skill meter, which shows student progress from beginning to mastery. If you want more information about the skill meter, you can click the info icon or press learn more in the pop-up box to get a help desk article. And one other thing that you see on the screen is that we have recommendations for how to continue exploring this concept. For instance, our intelligence system says that students who watch this video score 87% or higher on the practice. If you were to keep scrolling down this report, you'd see each question, it's easy, medium, hard label, and the exact answer the student typed or selected. After viewing this report, students always have the option to keep practicing, they can start and stop at any time and even continue beyond 10 correct. Okay. I think I know that was a ton of information. Um, we've had a couple comments about how quickly we are covering content. <laughs> it is <There's> quick. <laughs> a, there, there is a lot to cover, um, but we wanted to kind of give you the beginning parts to give you an idea of what's happening. Um, and Lindsay is now going to take that and dive deep in there and show you it a little bit slower as she works her way through the actual live component. Sure. So let me show you our adaptive practice as it relates to a Flexbook 2.0 lesson right now. Um, I'm going to come down here and why don't we, let's go to geometry. Um, notice that when I selected geometry, I wasn't immediately taken to a book. There's a tab here that I could search for our Flexbook and I'm going to go to our CK12 interactive geometry for CCSS yet another way to get to books. Um, when I'm here, I'm just gonna open up a lesson. Oh man, this is all stuff I learned a long time ago. Not sure it was my favorite subject. I'm an English teacher, but we're gonna jump in here. So we're looking at tangent lines to circles. And again, I've got other ways to learn here on my start page. And then when I press start, I'm taken into the lesson, okay? But what I wanna show you is the practice that's attached to it. So since I'm signed in as a teacher, I can preview the practice. So let's just preview this practice to see what the students would be seeing. So this is the screen that I just had in the, in the keynote presentation. Uh, trying Right now, zero out of 10 correct. Skill level is to be determined. There's a question, there's an image, there's answers. Um, for any of you asking if you're able to create your own questions, of course you are, um, which is covered in next week's webinar as well. Um, but our practice tool, um, again, it's designed to be practice. So students can get a hint, they can use the scratch pad if they need to draw some angles, write anything, and then they can answer the questions. 
I got that one correct, which is awesome. And even if you miss a question, you get a positive um, message, a little encouragement to keep going. I'm gonna miss a few. And the system's not gonna let me answer too many incorrectly before it's going to intervene. It knew that I just answered three or four in a row incorrectly. And so it says, hey, I think you should go back to this lesson on tangent lines. Maybe you should use our Plix Interactive, or you should watch a video that covers, this, covers these principles. So I'm going to ignore those suggestions right now since I'm just previewing it and return to practice. But you can kind of get an idea of how this works. And the skill level is gonna to continue to develop based on how the student's answering these easy, medium, and hard questions. There's the little key for the skill level meter. And students can stop and return to practice at any time. So if they need to do a little before dinner, a little after dinner, some the next day, they can continue to build on practice up until um, they get their 10 correct, their 100%. Their 100 so that's, a, that's practice in a Flexbook 2.0 lesson. Now, say that you're not interested in assigning this lesson and you're just like, hey, I just want to do the adaptive practice. I'm going to go back to the home page and you'll notice under the explore menu we have adaptive practice right here and you're taken to a slightly different browse page where you can browse by subject so let's go into biology and I can pick a lesson um, or an adaptive practice here on the on the <laughs> in the blue you can see that on the right, it's showing me which ones of these practices I've already started or completed, probably for other demos. If I go to states of matter, it's telling me it thinks it's gonna take about four minutes to complete. I've got some related um, readings here and I can start practicing. From this view, the assign button is right here at the top of the individual adaptive practice. Um, why don't I stop there for a minute, Katie? How are we doing with our questions? Do you think people are starting to get the hang of this? Yeah, there's a couple of things. That's actually a perfect screen right there where it says download worksheet. Um, so we do have some questions about kind of printing options. You can download a worksheet for a practice either there or in a 2.0 Flexbook um, if you click the down arrow next to preview. So that's one way to get kind of a subset of the questions if you needed download options. Um, if you wanted to see the full set, you'd want to customize that practice into a quiz, and then you could browse all of the questions that are tagged to that particular topic. Um, so there are still a couple questions about practice and quizzes. As Lindsay said, we're going to cover that more in next Monday's webinar. Um, we opted to do kind of a three series, three Mondays in a row series of our core content. Um, so definitely check us out then. But you do lose the adaptive component when you do the quiz because you actually as a teacher can pick the questions and everyone gets the same questions. Um, we'll very shortly have the option to save progress and so it'll work a little bit more like a homework assignment. Um, but in this case, you're actually, you can either pick a number of questions or the actual questions you want in a quiz. Um, so that's kind of the big difference is that the adaptive practice adapts to student performance and adjusts based on how students are doing. Um, whereas quizzes, every kid gets the same exact questions. The scores are based on a clean percentage score, more of like an assessment um, or a homework assignment that way. So that piece in terms of difference, I think is probably a big one that we wanted to cover there. Um, that's also how you would delete a question from practice. So if you wanted a subset of the questions right now, your option would be to pick and choose which ones you wanted to include um, by pulling what ones you wanted in that quiz feature. Um, there's not a way to kind of just say, oh, I want all but these couple because I cut this section out. Um, you would just want to use the quiz feature for that. Um, and then we have a bunch of assignment questions um, that have to do with different pieces um, here, but we're going to talk about assignments in a minute. We do have one last question, maybe, Lindsay, you want to take a crack at, which is, why did you choose the book that you picked? So this person says they teach algebra and there's many to choose from, especially for reads and video lessons. So how might you go about choosing based on level, difficulty, or something like that? Sure. So depending on what you click on from this, what do you want to teach today, you can get math by level, math by subject. 
Um, like you said, I think I went into probably what you're referring to is that I went into geometry and it's presented in a way that's a little bit different from our science where I can expand all and see all of the individual concepts that we have for math. But I clicked over to this Flexbook textbook tab. And here we have different options that include geometry, which could be everything from our middle school six, seven, eight, geometry, and then a lot of other Flexbooks down below. The key thing that you wanna look for is that this 2.0 here in blue, these are our most up-to-date, interactive, unified books. So if you end up on a browse page like this, you would wanna select one of the 2.0 books. The other way that you could get to Flexbooks, again, is go to Flexbook 2.0 and scroll down, and you'll see this is what we are presenting as our best options for these individual books. So if you're looking for algebra, I would click on the Interactive Algebra 1 for CCSS. Um, got Algebra 2 here, we've got Pre-Calc Concepts. And then same thing for Science. These are our most updated resources. Lindsay, can you just stay there for one second? We had a question about finding the separation between middle school and high school science. So there's our, your break right here. So our 2.0 lessons, earth science, life, and physical science is kind of the middle school area. Biochem and physics is our high school content. Um, so hopefully that addresses kind of the break in where you'd find middle school versus high school science. Awesome. Should we move on to the assignments? Yeah, portion? I think there's a lot of questions about assignments and learning yeah. management systems. Okay, we're going to so show them. We're going to show them how to do it. We will jump right into there and go. Okay, so we know that many of you are still exploring CK12 and trying to get a feel for all the different resources. Um, as a reminder, this is what we consider to be our assignable core modalities or different ways to learn. You can assign a read, which we kind of use interchangeably with lesson, a video, a plix, simulation, adaptive practice, and real world application. While all of our resources have a unique URL that you can always copy and paste to share with others, or use that green share plane to share, assigning a modality will generate a report for the teachers and students to view. So if you are already in a school or district that uses Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, people asked what an LMS was. It stands for Learning Management System. Um, and these are the three that we integrate pretty cleanly with. Um, so if you use those, you can create assignments from within Schoology and Canvas or directly to Classroom. Um, so you do not need to create a CK12 class. We actually recommend that you don't, that you keep working in whatever environment your students are used to, cut down on one thing they have to understand and you have to learn. Um, but for those of you guys that kind of need CK12 classes as an option, you can go ahead and create one of those um, and check that out. And then if you are using a learning management system, check out the pre-recorded webinars on our webinars page for Canvas and Schoology, and then a separate one for Classroom, um, as those dig deep into exactly what you need to click to integrate and kind of assign and go from there. Uh, but that just gives you kind of a sense on that breakup between using a CK12 class and using a learning management system if you already use that. So that's something to keep in mind. We've talked a little bit about sharing versus assigning. I know this question came in. So across our site, you're gonna see both the option to share resources and to assign resources. So within this Flexbook 2.0 lesson, this one on Continental Drift shows the options assign to class, share, and share to class. When you click assign to class, from the sidebar or the top menu, or an orange assign box on the left side for other stuff, you will see this pop up. It will ask you if you want to assign to CK12 or to Google Classroom. So as I said, you can assign directly to either one of those options from within CK12. While Canvas and Schoology work a little bit differently because they're done in their platforms based on those restrictions. Now, if you create an assignment picking Classroom or CK12, it means that the student's grade will be passed back and you as the teacher will be able to see those student reports. That's also true if you did the same thing from within Canvas or Schoology. If instead of clicking assign, you clicked share, you're just gonna share that link, either externally in an email, to social media, or to Google Classroom. There's no reports attached to that, there's no assignment attached to that, you don't see grades, 
you're simply sharing that resource. We often recommend kind of sharing the whole Flexbook, but then assigning individual lessons that you need those reports on. Share to class does the same thing internally to a CK12 class if you are using CK12 classes. So it would share that particular resource to whichever class or classes you picked. Um, so you can also, if you wanted to just share externally, copy the URL at the top of any page, whether that's a Flexbook lesson, a whole Flexbook, an interactive, or anything like that, um, and going from there, either using that link, share a plane to share, or any share button, um, versus the assign option, as we said, that's what's gonna get you that report for an educator if you need one. Thank you for explaining that, Katie. Um, you just showed how to assign a lesson from a Flexbook 2.0, but I want to show everyone how they can assign individual modalities as well, such as our Plex Sims videos and real world applications separate from a Flexbook. And one option that we, I showed you briefly earlier is to use the search bar at the top of the homepage and type in a concept. In this case, we're seeing results for continental drift. You can click on that top concept page, or you can use our filter options to see a certain type of modality. Another way to find individual modalities is to use the options at the bottom of the home page or the explore menu at the top of any page. These can take you to the browse pages specific to Plex simulations or adaptive practice. And I want to show you really quickly where to find the assign button for our interactives for both Plex and our simulations, you will find the orange button in the top menu bar. If you're looking to assign a standalone read, a video, or a real world application, you can do so on the left menu, like this read on angles, or this video on earthquakes, or this real world application called keep your spit to yourself. Um, these are all <laughs> never been more relevant. These are all assigned to uh, the same way and they all report the same way. Notice you can also view an assigned practice from the box in the upper right hand corner on these pages as well. All right, let's switch over to a live demo again. And I am back on our home page. And let's just look at a couple things real quick. Again, if you are in a Flexbook 2.0 lesson, it looks like this. And when you press the assign button, you have the option to assign to a CK12 class, or you can assign to Google Classroom. If you are a Canvas or Schoology user, you would do this process from within Canvas or Schoology. So that's where the assign button is on a Flexbook 2.0 lesson. But let's say you are working on a Plex. Um, I like this one because it actually has Katie, Carl, and Lindsay. Um, I guess we're being nice and we're sharing Halloween candy together. Uh, but here's this orange button that's assigned to class. And the same thing will happen is that you will select CK12 as a learning management system or Google Classroom. So for those of you who are not Google Classroom users, you're not Canvas users, you're not Schoology users, we're getting a lot of users who, yes, what is a learning management system? I don't have one. Um, CK12 is here to help you. This is what the classes menu option is for on our page. So you have the ability to set up a CK12 class. If you are parents and you are doing this for your students at home, you could have each of your students be in their own class. Um, if you are trying to set up an online learning environment for, you know, hour one biology, hour two biology, you can do that through CK12 if you would like. Okay. Um, the way to do that with classes is to come over here and you can create a class. You will get class codes that people can later use to join a class if they would like. I'm going to scroll down and we have, we have a class, I think the summer 2019 class, we had our interns kind of populate some work so you could see how a CK12 class looks. Um, but you can see that we've got a lot of assignments here. We have the class assignments that we made back in July to our summer interns, or I have all of the assignments that I've ever made in this account that I could quickly reference for a quick assign. Okay. I'm not going to go too in depth into all of this. Most of it's fairly intuitive if you wanted to look at our shared resources, Q&A, um, but reports is really what I want to show you. If you have assigned something 
in CK12 or in Google Classroom or in Canvas, you are gonna see a heat map that looks like this. You can see all of the things that have been assigned and what they are, whether it's a quiz, a practice, a real world application, a Sims, a video, and we can see our individual interns um, acting as students here um, as well. If you select a student, you get information about that student's progress. So you can see here, you know, Ryan still needs to turn in his quiz, some other progress. If I want to look at exactly, let's see, let's look at what Sonali missed on her quiz. I can select this cell and I can see that she got five out of eight correct. I can see exactly what the student missed, what was typed in. If I scroll back up here, I can see that two minutes was spent on these eight questions. And that time spent could be huge if you're wondering how long it took a student to get 100% on this practice. It took Bryce five minutes and um, answered 10 of 16 questions correct, five easy, five medium, didn't quite answer any of the hard questions correct. Where Natalie's breakdown probably looks a little bit different, Natalie only spent four minutes, Again, 10 out of 15 questions, but was taken on more of the hard questions. So this is, this is what our, our heat map looks like. And our quizzes and our practice are the scores where you're going to get a percentage. And then things like real world applications and simulations and clicks, you're going to see a check mark, meaning that the student accessed that modality or that they opened it up and started interacting with it. A um, couple other things is that if, if you are needing a CSV file, like an Excel file to download and then maybe upload into your gradebook, you're able to download this data through the this, this CSV. It'll, it'll download that spreadsheet for you. I think people find that really, really helpful. Um, if you need more information about reports, we do have a great little icon over here that explains what how each of these report if you've assigned them through CK12 and what the percentage and what the check mark and all of that means. Um, Katie, why don't you show them what's available for insights right now? Because it's an area that we're quickly developing, rapidly sure, let me developing, I guess. Borrow this back for a second. Sure. So Insights, there's a couple things that you want to kind of keep in mind. These are available for 2.0 lessons. So this is one of the reasons why we recommend that if given the choice, you start with a 2.0 Flexbook, or if you really, really want content from one of our older books, that you add it to a new Flexbook and make that 2.0. Um, because you will get not only the attached practice skill level scores for kids, but you'll also get the time on lesson. So for here, you can see this color-coded version. Katie's doing a little bit better on her practice than Ryan is. She's actually at a mastery level. She didn't spend a ton of time, so this might be review. And you can see a histogram on the side of where she spent her time on that lesson. That's only available in 2.0 under that toolbar for insights. Now, if I went to Ryan, you'd see that he's still exploring this. So he might or might not be done with his practice, but he submitted at least something for me to start looking at. Could have completed that goal of 10 correct, but is exploring that content and it's taken a little bit longer time on this. So as we kind of expand, we had questions coming in about, can I see their progress on clicks included? Can I see pieces? Is the practice assigned with it? In 2.0 lessons, you're assigning the text and the attached practice. And that's where you get this time on lesson for the text that they read through and then the skill score for an attached practice or quiz. So that's what gets assigned cleanly as kind of your score for that lesson. There's one other piece I wanna talk about insights that's currently available and we'll see you know, down the road what other ones we can surface for you. Um, but the next one is specifically for our science content. And we have what we call paragraph mapping for science. So in this case, when I clicked on Ryan's um, insights here and wanted to see what was happening and scroll down, I saw this little blinking teal dot here. And Ryan would see the same thing if he was opening this lesson in his assignment. Um, and when you click on that teal dot, what you get is a note that says, we recommend you review this paragraph because you got this question wrong in your practice. So you can see here that it says the majority of metals are blank, meaning they're capable of being stretched. And if I went back there, you could see that 
about four bullet points down in this paragraph or this set of list we have here, it says the majority of metals are ductile, so they can be pulled into long, thin shapes. Um, so that is both helpful for you as a teacher. If a bunch of your students have dots in the same paragraph, that's a great thing to cover or review. And they can even review on their own with that teal dot. So that's kind of the cool thing about insights for 2.0. Okay, I think as we're approaching that hour mark, we're still keeping an eye on the Q&A and we will stay on and answer all of the questions that you all have. Um, but why don't we um, go over some final logistics and then we'll get back to sending the Q&A window. Sounds great. So as we said, we're going to go back to this Q&A, but let's kind of cover what's coming up. So a lot of you are asking about quizzes and customizing and figuring out how to do all these really cool things as the next step to CK12. We are hosting webinars the next two Mondays in a row. We want to make sure you guys can go in depth if you want to. Um, so customizing is next Monday, same time, 3 p.m. Pacific. And then strategies, some great options to use um, kind of in some classes or within classes. And we'll rethink a little bit about that as more and more schools are going online right now, um, how we can kind of highlight some of those pieces when we cover that particular piece on the six, same time. And then for the last two weeks, and we're gonna continue moving forward, we're offering a school closure webinar. Um, that's not part of the Certified Educator Program, but it's a separate short webinar, 30 minutes of core content, and then another half hour of questions. You guys got a lot of that content today, um, but if you want a quick refresher, that's a good one to join us for or share with other people, because um, that will help as you all make this transition for anyone doing that at this time. Um, and that is being offered this Wednesday, so two days from now at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And you can register for all of those or see recordings of past ones at ck12.org slash webinars. Now, as we said, this webinar is one of the core sessions for the Certified Educator Program. So if you are brand new and want information on how to get started, you've already got one of the three live sessions under your belt, you can go to ck12.org slash certified and register right there. Now, we would love your feedback on our webinars. We are always looking to improve them. Um, if you have two or three minutes, go ahead and go to this tinyurl.com CK12 feedback 1920 for this school year and fill out a short survey to let us know what we did well and what we can improve for the next time we run this webinar. Um, so we truly appreciate your comments as we go through from there. So with that, um, we're gonna jump back into Q&A in a second. And as we said, we will stay on until we run out of questions that you guys are asking. Um, this gives us a chance to kind of wrap up the core content, let people go if they have no questions, um, and then to stay on and get into some of the little nitty gritty pieces if people need us to demo them at this time. Um, but we thank you for joining us today. You are more than welcome to email us at any time at jumpstart at ck12.org or support at ck12.org. Don't forget to let your social networks know about us and your participation in this Certified Educator Program if you're doing that, or just your transition to CK12 if you're making that change at this time or continuing if you've been on us and using us for a while. It's great. So I think we're gonna go back. Linz, what questions do we have that we wanna cover right now? Well, Katie, maybe you could go back to the Insights screen just while we're still in, in the keynote presentation. And somebody was asking how they access Insights and I guess where they might be seeing these on our site. Sure, so that toolbar, and I this is a screenshot, so it's a little hard to kind of see, but up in the top right, there's a toolbar with a grid. It has like nine little white squares. Um, and if you click on that, and the second one down is Insights, um, and you will see that available. I think it's the second one down. Um, and what you want to do is if you're using CK12, you can just open that book and pick your class and adjust from there. If you are using Canvas or Google Classroom and want to access the insights, then you would open the assignment up just like one of your students would do. Um, because that will pull the class information with it when you open it. And then you'll have like in this case, I think this is a Canvas class that I took a screenshot of fall 2019 demo for Canvas. Um, and so I just clicked the link like a kid would click it. It opened this lesson. And then as a teacher, I was able to pick on the toolbar and choose insights. Um, so the easiest way to get to it is to just click on the assignment link like a student would to access that and then access insights from there. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to take the screen for a demo. We had several questions about um, quizzes, and I'm glad you guys are exciting about, excited about quizzes because it's definitely a, a really cool feature of our site, but I intentionally didn't go in depth about this because it's the subject of 
our next webinar in the series that's going to happen next Monday night that's about customizing Flexbooks and customizing our adaptive practice. But for those of you eager to get started, I'm just going to show you a couple of things. When you are signed into our site and you go to your library, you have the option to create new things. So maybe you want to start your own book from scratch. You could select Flexbook 2.0, or if you wanted to create a quiz, you can press quiz here and you're taken to our quiz builder, which again, we're going to talk about next week in depth. If you're trying to do something and you can't remember how to do it, our help desk has some great information. So you could say that you're a teacher or a parent and you can find out about using CK12 classes. If you wanted to know how to create a quiz, there's a link right here. Um, or, you know, one other thing relating to quizzes is that remember all of our practice can be customized into a quiz. So if I'm on my adaptive practice and I want to customize, that will also take me to this quiz builder. So I, again, that's not, it's not super in depth, but maybe that gives you a few hints of how to get started. I would check out those help desk articles on that. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, we have a couple questions in here um, asking about kind of where to start. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do. Maybe you could go back to that top concepts page. Um, for those of you guys trying to just get jump started, this top concepts, um, you can see explore concepts kind of across here. If you are a middle school or high school math or science teacher, this is a great place to start. Um, you can kind of pick your topic. I know someone asked about middle school science, so maybe one of the science ones right there. Um, and you can open up that lesson, explore it, explore the whole book, or just click the assigned to class and start going from there. If you're using Google Classroom, we definitely recommend you just stay in Google Classroom. Don't add another class, don't confuse things, just go straight there. Um, so hopefully that's a way to get your feet wet um, or just kind of explore some of our content and try to assign you know, an interactive or simulation. Um, that explore menu at the top of our website is another great quick resource. Um, so maybe Lindsay can close this for two seconds and just click on explore so you can see once more up at the top. You, that's a good kind of broad overview if you wanted to explore pieces, but the top concepts is definitely a good place to start. Okay, we had a couple questions about becoming a certified educator and um, I guess I'm going to get to it from the explore menu here. You can go to our certified educator program page and it's going to give you more information about um, what what's involved in completing the program what the benefits are remember this is a completely free program and if you scroll down well first of all you have the option to register up here um, talks about the benefits right here you know if your district will allow professional development hours for attending webinars, engage with our moderators, get more knowledge than you would have had otherwise on CK12, join a network of educators, and you just need to attend three live webinars. This was one of them in our CEP series, two on-demand sessions, and then the five matching assignments. Um, also, you'll join our network of alumni. Um, you have the option to um, reach out to any of our alumni that have this little envelope here who, um, are willing to you know, talk to you about their experiences with CK12, that can be really powerful right now. Great, we had a couple different questions on Google Classroom. So I just opened a class up, so maybe I'll borrow this screen for a second um, and show you guys. So this is an example Google class here. And if I open up any one of my assignments, I have two options. So part one, I can actually see the work that they've done. It looks like they've submitted this work here. If I click on any one of these links, this will actually open up the class report for all of the work my students have done within CK12. So let's go ahead and close this little remote learning piece and you can kind of navigate just like Lindsay was showing you from within a Google Classroom within our larger class report. So that's one piece there. So if you're looking for the class report, just click on any one of these links. And then as I said for insights, if you're looking for the insight piece, go ahead to the instructions, which is what students would see when they did this work, and click on the same link they would access to see this, and you'll get kicked into CK12 the way that they would access that particular lesson. And then once that lesson opens, if it's a 2.0 lesson, I can click on the toolbar at the top, and it looks like we've updated this lesson since I made this assignment. So I can just leave that as is because this is what my students saw. And actually it's the first piece right there. So insights here. 
And then I can navigate between seeing Lindsay spent three minutes and she's proficient, two minutes proficient, and you can kind of see where they spent. I think this one was done actually before the histogram was in place, which is why part of that might be flat. Um, but times there and then exploring. And if it was um, science, you would also start seeing those dots. But as we said, directly, just like a student would, open that link or within student work, click on the link to open a class report. Um, Katie, we have one question left in the Q&A where since you're already demoing, maybe you could just uh, take this one. The question is, is um, how to present CK-12 Earth Science content to high school students so that they think that it is high school and not be too easy or basic for them. Um, remember, all of our things, all of our resources can be customized. And so one thing that I would suggest is to go to a Flexbook and here you can search for subjects and for grades. And Katie, I'll let you talk through what you're clicking on here. Sure, so I opened Flexbooks. When we made our 2.0 Flexbook for Earth Science, we, the majority of the content was middle school based. So they actually created this 2.0 Earth Science book for middle school. Um, you could take that content and customize it um, and adjust pieces. You could also open our Earth Science for high school or Earth Science Concepts for high school book. This is a good one because it's tagged to matching practice. Um, and you could add from an older book, you can add to a flex book at the book level or within any chapter level if you just wanted to add a chapter. So let's say I wanted this introduction added. I could add this to a new flex book and I could create one that combines the middle school content that I might be helpful with some of the high school content if I wanted to kind of supplement those pieces. And then I would just call it, you know, my high school or science book. Um, and that would be a way to kind of pull that content from a couple different places. And also, if you are teaching high school, you may find that there are some relevant topics in here that aren't included in that middle school book that you might want to join in. Awesome. Okay, I think we are going to wrap up this webinar right now. If you have any additional questions, you can email support at ck12.org and we will get back to you on those. Um, otherwise, thank you for joining today and we hope to see you in a future webinar. Thanks so much.